Hi folks, I'm Jem, the Crazy Pigeon Lady, and welcome to my video in this latest series called Pigeocation Monthly. Uh, I'm the Crazy Pigeon Lady and it's my mission to entertain, educate and inspire you with all things pigeon and dove. Uh, I'm recording this video on the 13th of June, which is Pigeon Appreciation Day. And I thought this was the perfect day to share this video with you because at the Crazy Pigeon Lady, we appreciate all pigeons and doves, uh, regardless of species. Although a lot of the content that I post is about uh, the species Columba livia, the rock dove, um, which we're most familiar with as domesticated pigeons and feral pigeons in our towns and cities. But there is a much, much wider world of pigeons and doves out there. So this month's Pigeocation is all about the Columbidae, which is the whole family of birds that comprises all pigeons and doves. Uh, and if you watch one of my earlier videos for Fun Fact Friday, you'll know the difference between a pigeon and dove, uh, which is in fact no difference at all. Uh, in an ornithological sense, they are all part of this same family, the Columbidae. Now the Columbidae is a very large family of birds comprising all pigeons and doves and there are over 300 different species of pigeons and doves occupying virtually every continent on the globe except for Antarctica. Um, and these pigeons and doves uh, occupy a range of different habitats. Uh, everything from rocky uplands, so the, the, the foothills of mountains and things like that, rocky coasts like the rock dove I mentioned earlier. Uh, some of them occupy scrubland and, and, and open country, and some occupy, or indeed many, occupy all different types of forests. There's a huge amount of diversity uh, within the family Columbidae. Uh, some of the pigeons and doves can be as small as maybe a sparrow or other small songbird, and some can be as large as the hen turkey. And uh, if you watch one of my other Fun Fact Friday videos, you will know when I was talking about what the largest pigeon is, uh, that the largest wild species of pigeon is Gura victoria, the victoria crown pigeon, which is, as I mentioned before, the size of a small hen turkey. Uh, so that just shows you the massive range of size that there can be in amongst this family of bird. Some of them have specific adaptations for their environment. Uh, and there's a wide range of colours and patterns. Now, if you live, as I do, in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, most pigeons are what we would describe as fairly dull coloured, sort of pale greys and browns. But there are some beautiful, subtle iridescence in there that just brings them alive. But further down in the Southern Hemisphere and in the equatorial areas, pigeons and doves get a lot more colourful, particularly those that occupy forests, rainforests, jungle, different types of environments like that. A lot of fruit eating pigeons, for example. Uh, some of these pigeons are very, very brightly coloured um, and are almost as colourful as, as, as parrots, you know, and, and other birds we think of uh, as being very rainbow coloured. Uh, so if you thought pigeons were rather dull in appearance, um, there's a whole wide world of pigeons out there which are very much not dull at all uh, when it comes to their colours and their markings. Some of pigeons and doves are migratory, that is that they move around to exploit different food sources or breed in appropriate sites at different times of the year, but many are not. Uh, some species are social, in fact very few species are social, the rock dove being the main one that we're familiar with, um, but many are not. Um, many are what we call gregarious, which means they are comfortable hanging around in numbers where there's sufficient food sources uh, or perhaps water and they might gather together there in numbers, but they're not actually operating as a social group and don't necessarily need the social group as a part of their life cycle or their survival process. Some uh, of the pigeons are what we call um, arboreal. That means tree dwelling, so they spend a lot of their time up in trees uh, and don't go down to the ground very much. Some are ground feeding specialists, um, regardless of whether they can fly or not. They spend most of their time on the ground and some of them will switch between the two. They have a range of different diets. So in the northern hemisphere, typically the pigeons are granivorous. That is, they largely eat uh, seeds and grains. Uh, although some species will also incorporate other things into their diets. In the UK where I live, the main wild species is the Eurasian wood pigeon, which is a granivorous species, but will eat fruits and berries from trees as well. 
Other uh, birds in the Columbidae family are what we call frugivorous, that is that they are fruit eating specialists. And this is mainly the pigeons that live at the equator and in the southern hemisphere, particularly in the forests, the rainforests and jungles. And they largely have fruits as the main part of their diet, particularly figs. Uh, and they'll swallow these whole and their digestive systems are specifically adapted for this fruit based diet. But many pigeons and doves will have a mixed diet, uh, including grains and indeed some fruits and green matter as well. Um, in the northern hemisphere, pigeons will take not just grains, but they'll also eat uh, vegetable matter, grass, weeds, things like that. And even during the breeding season, particularly some of the ground dwelling specialists will also eat small uh, insects, vertebrates, snails, worms and things like that for that extra protein that they need when they're raising their young. So what makes a columbid? What makes a pigeon or a dove? Now most people, even if they're not an expert in pigeons or doves, uh, shown a picture of a, a pigeon or dove species that they have never seen before will be able to probably identify it as being some sort of pigeon or dove and that's because they have certain consistencies in their appearance which typifies birds of their kind so in terms of their shape and proportions generally they're quite small headed relative to their body size which is usually quite plump and rounded but compact and usually they have relatively short legs uh, in comparison to the size of their bodies and they're usually quite plump and muscular uh, around the breast area uh, which is an adaptation uh, to uh, ground feeding um, and being able to get away quickly they need those muscles uh, to be able to fly very quickly also in addition to the typical shape and proportions that characterize a pigeon or a dove uh, they all have a quite soft uh, beaks. They have the serrae or the, or the wattle that sits over the top of the beak and they generally have a fleshy ring around their eye and in some species this is quite subtle and quite thin and maybe quite plain coloured. In some species this is brightly coloured and in some species these serrae are very well developed indeed um, and they can be not only thick and large but colourful as well. All pigeons and doves, except for one species, uh, drink by drafting, which is different to other birds. Most birds drink by dipping their beak in water, tipping up their head and allowing the water to trickle down their throat. Pigeons and doves drink by a process we call drafting, which is that they put their beak down into the water and they use a sucking motion to draw the water up into their mouth. Not that different to how we humans drink. There is only one species in the whole of the Columbidae that breaks this rule, and that is the uh, tooth-billed pigeon, uh, which I'll be talking about soon in one of my Fun Fact Friday videos. And because of the toothed bill, which is an adaptation to its diet, it can't actually drink by drafting. The water would, would come out of the sides. So it drinks uh, in the way that other birds do. But that is the only exception. And that is, uh, this drinking by drafting is something that's very particular to pigeons and doves and, and not at all common uh, to, to other birds. They rear their young, the, the manner in which they rear your, their young is actually pretty consistent um, across pigeons and dove species. Uh, both parents will work together to raise the young, so unlike other bird species which might be raised solely by the male or solely by the female, um, pigeons and doves work together and both the male and the female will produce the pigeon milk. Uh, which they're fed on, the babies are fed on for the first few days of their lives, stimulated by the hormone prolactin. And they'll each play a role in brooding the chicks, keeping them warm, sitting them on, sitting on the nest and looking out for predators. And they'll switch throughout the day and take different shifts and play an equal part uh, in the raising of the birds. Also, uh, across the pigeon and dove kingdom, they'll re uh, lay one or two not more than two, that would be unusual, that would be untypical. Uh, and generally the eggs, uh, the one or two eggs that they lay will be of some sort of shade of whitish. Some might be very bright pure white, some might be a kind of a duller, slightly buffish or creamy white. But all across the Columbidae, it's one to two eggs, 
in a whitish kind of colour and that is consistent. There are also quite a lot of consistencies in their displays and sounds. Most of us will recognise that pigeons perform some sort of coo. Uh, how this coo shows itself can be quite variable in terms of its pitch, its duration and how it's made, but they all make the sound in the same way, which is through the inflation of air sacs. Uh, underneath their crop and it's that those air sacs that allow that sound uh, to be projected over great distances and pigeons hearing is adapted to hear these low frequency sounds uh, which is what allows them to communicate particularly uh, for those pigeons that live in a dense forested environment where there's lots of trees and things getting in the way they need to make themselves heard So that's a bit about the, the typical characteristics that, that characterise a member of the Columbidae. I'll move on to talking about domestication because of, of all the pigeons and dove species, pretty much only one has uh, successfully fully been domesticated by humans and that's the rock dove, Columba livia. This is a species I talk about lots and lots on this page. Uh, because it's the species we're most familiar with and we're both most likely to encounter in our towns and cities or as domestic birds. The Barbary dove is another species that's been partially domesticated by uh, humans and is often kept as a cage bird in aviaries or inside homes. And they are semi-domestic in their, in their temperament but haven't been domesticated to quite the same degree or nearly as long uh, as the rock dove. There are a few other species that are commonly kept uh, as cage birds, so things like zebra doves, diamond doves, that sort of thing. But they're not truly domestic birds in the way that other cage birds, hookbills for example, parakeets, parrots, budgies, uh, are commonly kept as pets but are not considered to be domesticated animals. In conservation terms, uh, across uh, the three over 300 species of pigeons and doves, around a third of them, just over 30%, are uh, threatened in some way in their local habitat. Uh, and there are a handful of species are actually critically endangered, uh, in which they are a great danger of disappearing from the planet entirely. And there is one species, the Socorro dove, that is in fact extinct in the wild and only exists in the zoos and bird collections around the world, and only about 150 individuals at that. There are a number of threats to pigeons and doves, Usually this involves habitat loss, uh, so the loss of the, the, the forests, the plants or the areas where they feed, they find their food and they find the right breeding sites, uh, particularly those that live at the equator in the southern hemisphere, they're very vulnerable to deforestation. Uh, also other things like introduced uh, predators, so non-native animals introduced by humans, uh, these could be uh, things like rats, cats and in some areas grazing animals like uh, like pigs or sheep that graze the understory of the environment and destroy uh, the, the, the vegetation that the pigeons need in, in order to feed. Pigeons are not particularly um, prone to being trapped for the pet trade. Um, only a handful of species are actually subject to this. Many of the more exotic varieties of pigeon are not only difficult to find, but also incredibly difficult to keep in aviculture as well, especially uh, keeping them in good condition, uh, looking as colourful as they would if they were out in the wild. So they're not actually really targeted by the pet trade. Some species may be locally hunted for their meat, um, but that's that's probably the least of their problems. Uh, so it's the habitat uh, loss and the introduced predators that are the main threats uh, to, to those species which are considered threatened uh, amongst the family. Generally pigeons and doves are many of the species are not actually very well studied. Um, a huge amount is not known about them. Obviously we're very familiar with the rock dove, the, the Columba Libya, which has been, been studied hugely. It was studied by Darwin in, when he was studying his theories of evolution. And it was studied throughout the 20th century and into the 21st century in experiments in psychology and, and, and also trying to understand how uh, pigeons navigate and other sorts of experiments like that. But most pigeons and doves are not really well studied or known, uh, which 
which is why more information is needed, especially for conservation purposes, to help protect some of these species from being driven to extinction. So there you are, that's my whistle stop tour, my Pigeon 101 on the Columba Day, the family of birds which includes all pigeons and doves. I've talked about the huge diversity that there are in the species and how they're adapted to their environment, what sort of diets that they feed on, the characteristics that characterise what makes a pigeon and dove a member of the Columba Day, um, a bit about domestication of a couple of species and also their current conservation challenges. I hope that's been of interest to you. Um, please join me later uh, for my four o'clock live for Pigeon Appreciation Day. I hope you'll join me where I'll be talking all things pigeon and dove, talking about some of the things that I'm working on in terms of future videos and you can put to me your questions and I'll do my best to answer them. So enjoy P uh, Pigeon Appreciation Day. Please appreciate pigeons and doves in all their forms. Please Please keep liking and sharing my page thank you so much for everyone who's supporting it so far and i will see you next time bye bye